I'm Joshua Bartwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you have never set up a Tyrannus before, or if you want to learn how I set up my Tyrannus when I get a new Tyrannus, which I don't do that often, <laughs> but today I have the Tyrannus Plus that I got to replace the Tyrannus that I had the issue with the radio board and the 5 dBi antenna mod. Don't worry, I'll have more videos about that and what exactly happened. But today, let's take a look at this radio. And uh, we'll go through the initial setup of the radio itself, which obviously you only do once. And then I'll set up the first model. You know, I've done a lot of videos where I've showed you the initial setup of Betaflight. And I've always kind of hand waved over what you do with the Tyrannus while you're setting up the model. And so it's time to show you that part. Let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is hold down the menu key. That'll bring you to the radio setup menu, and I'm going to adjust the battery meter range. And the reason I have to do that is that instead of the nickel metal hydride battery that comes with the radio, I'm using a 3S LiPo. It, I think I got it from GetFPV, uh, and it's specifically designed to fit in the battery compartment of the radio. Uh, so I'm going to adjust the top end of the battery meter range to be about 12 volts, roughly what a fully charged 3S is. 12.234, something like that. 12.4 volts, that's where I end up. And then the bottom end of the battery meter range as well, so I get a warning when the battery's getting low. I highly recommend this mod. It does mean you can't charge the battery simply by plugging in the adapter. For, don't do that. You'll blow up your battery. Bad news. But it, I only have to charge the dang thing like once a month. I'm not kidding you. So uh, it's a good mod if you decide to do it. I'm also going to adjust the battery low alarm, and I like to set that to about, uh, what is it, 10.9, 10.8, something like that. I find that below that, the battery really starts to drop off quickly. That's when I like to get a nice warning that I really seriously, no seriously need to charge the battery. Okay, maybe 10.7. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I always increase the duration of the backlight. Uh, when you have this battery mod, you don't really have to worry about saving battery. Uh, you can change the color from blue to white on the Tyrannus Plus if you so desire. Uh, I like to keep the backlight on extra long just so it's not constantly turning off when I'm trying to look at it. Another thing I always do is I disable the splash screen. I hate the splash screen. I just want to turn the dang radio on and get to flying. So I turn the splash screen off. And I'm going to adjust the default channel order to match the default for Betaflight so that when I set up new models in Betaflight, I don't have to adjust the channel order. The Tyrannus will already be set to the channel order that Betaflight expects. Now let's go in the model selection and we're going to create a new model. I'll just go down to slot 2 and create one. It's going to ask me what type of uh, vehicle I'm flying here and it's going to be a uh, multi-rotor. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can set up really anything. Uh, but when, since we're flying a multi-rotor, let's pick a multi-rotor. All we really need is four channels here. It's going to ask us here to assign the channels, and the channels, they're going to, remember we set the default channel order to whatever AETR or whatever it was. And so that's going to be how it derives what the throttle and all the other channels are going to be here. If you wanted to change that, you could, but by setting up the default channel order to match what Betaflight expects, we shouldn't have to change any of these. So throttle should be on channel 3, roll on channel 1, and so on and so on. Here I'm double checking this, but it all comes out correctly. And I've verified that those match what Betaflight's expecting, and we should be good to go. So now we've created the new model. And I'm just going to go ahead, just because I want to neaten up, I'm going to delete that old model and move this one up to model number one. Now I'm going to press the page key to get to the model setup menu, and I'm going to set up this model. And oh, I'm going to pick the uh, image for the model. <laughs> it's really much easier to do this in the companion app, the desktop PC app, uh, because you can actually see all the models. But I'm just going to scroll down and pick, I think it's the quad model or the quad X model. I'll fast forward through this part for you. I don't set up any of the timers, and the reason I do that is that I use telemetry uh, or an OSD to decide when I need to stop flying. Uh, I am going to turn on the extended limits, uh, and that will let you adjust the channel uh, outside the normal range in case you need to do that for your receiver. And then I'm also going to set up the switch position alarms. I'm going to put my switches in the default position that I want them to be in. 
when I load the model, and I'm going to hold down the enter key, and it will remember that as the position the switches need to be in and give me a warning if they're not in that position. So for example, you're going to want to maybe set your arm switch to the disarm position. If you have any in-flight adjustments, set that to the neutral position so uh, no in-flight adjustments are happening. However the switches need to be when you first power up the model, set them that way, and then hold down the enter key or to, uh, to set that as the default position for the alarms. And then we're going to go down and bind the receiver. Uh, I'm going to bind the receiver in D16 mode. That's because I'm using an X4R SB, and that's the mode it uses. I'm going to set my receiver number to zero. I put all these receivers for this model on the same receiver number, so I can have multiple copters assigned to the same model. You can do that just by setting the same receiver number for all of them. I just use zero. And the other thing, oh, I have a video about that, by the way. If I remember, I'll put a link in the upper right. <laughs> the other thing is I've got the channel range set to channels 1 through 8, and that might confuse you a little bit because the X4R can support up to 16 channels, uh, so can many other receivers. The reason I have it set to channel 1 through 8 is that by using only 8 channels, you, re you cut the latency in half. So the, the uh, Tyrannus uses a, ch a frame, a radio frame that holds eight channels at a time. So if you uh, use 16 channels, it ha can only send each channel every other frame and you get twice the latency. So if you don't absolutely need more than eight channels, you can reduce the latency by a fair whack by setting the channel range to only one through eight. And you can see me here binding the receiver. Um, obviously that's just a basic, you know, you know how to bind a receiver. The next thing you're going to see me do is set the failsafe. The failsafe needs to be set to no pulses. It's really important you understand that only the X series receivers, the D16 receivers, support setting failsafe from the radio. If you have an older receiver like a D series receiver or maybe even one of the L series receivers, you must set the failsafe by pressing the button on the receiver. Look in the manual for how to do that. And you want the failsafe set to no pulses. That's what you need to figure out how to do. If you have an X series receiver though, simply setting the failsafe safe there in the radio will do it. And this is really nice if you set up multiple models on this, multiple uh, copters on the same model in the radio because you set the failsafe once in the radio and then every new one receiver you set up will have the failsafe set correctly when it's bound to that model. Now I'm going to press the page key a few more times. I'm going to step through the screens until I get to the... output screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the endpoints uh, of the model so that Betaflight sees 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds. Uh, and that's what you want to do again for every model. One of the advantages of using an SBUS receiver, uh, at least I've seen, is that they seem pretty consistent in their endpoints. If you set the endpoints for the model in the Tyrannus so that Betaflight sees 1,000 to 2,000, then when you build another copter and bind it to the same model, uh, the endpoints will already be correct. At least that's been my experience. Uh, let me show you how I set those endpoints. So here we are in Betaflight. Got Betaflight on the top and the Tyrannus on the bottom. I'm going to go to the receiver tab. My copter's powered up. Uh, I am using a smoke stopper and my props are off. I'm going to double check the channel order. Now I've got the channel order set for my old Tyrannus, which was RETA. I'm going to change it to AETR, which is the default for Betaflight. And hopefully that's all I'll have to do from now on. As I move the throttle, the yaw, the roll, and the pitch, I'm going to verify that the channel mapping is correct. You need to do this every time you get yourself in trouble if you take off with the channel mapping wrong. And then i got to figure out which channel is which, okay? So I'm kind of wiggling the yaw and trying to see. If you look down in the lower part of the screen, you can see the arrow move left and right as I move the stick. I'll highlight that for you. So I figured out that yaw is channel 4, and I'm going to go ahead and give that a name here. This is also much easier to do if you do it in the companion app, but I have so much experience doing it the hard way that I just go ahead and do it. And I've named this channel yaw now for future reference. And now I'm holding the stick at full deflection, and I'm going to adjust the lower end point until I get to 1000 in the configurator. And there we go. Now I'm going to hold the stick full deflection the other way. And I'm going to do the same thing so I get 2,000 at the top. You can see when it starts at 2,011, and I have to bring it in, pardon my hand here. I accidentally just reversed the channel. That's what that little arrow does. I didn't mean to do that. Let's try this again. 
hold it at full deflection, 2011, and I'm just going to bring that endpoint down until it gets to 2000. And now I'm going to do this for all the channels. I also need to check the center points. You can use the sub trim, which is the very first column. You can use the sub trim to adjust the center points. They need to be 1500. Uh, it turns out that all my center points are basically correct at 1500, so I'm not going to adjust the sub trims. But uh, if you find that the stick doesn't center with the channel at 1500, then you also need to do that. As I come to the end here, you may notice that I basically just set them all to 97.7% and that's basically got it correct. And this is a beautiful thing if you have good quality gimbals that are consistent and calibrated right. And if you're using a serial receiver, you should find that the, they should have pretty consistent. I found that for the uh, X-Series receivers, the S-Bus receivers, they basically all set them to about 96, 97% and you get your endpoints correct. And that's just really keeps things simple for me. It means that I don't need to do this. I mean, I check it on every copter that I build, but I don't need to manually redo it every time. It's usually correct right out of the box. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mixer screen and I'm going to set up my arming and my buzzer uh, modes. And I, I, again, I've got a separate video on setting up flight modes, but uh, here's how you do it from the Tyrannus. In the mixer, each of these lines represents one of the output channels. So you can see that channel one is the aileron Channel 2 is the elevator, channel 3 is the threader, channel 4 is the rudder. And channels 5, 6, 7, and 8 are going to be aux channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 in clean flight or beta flight. So I, I want to use channel 5, aux 1, to uh, do my arming mode. And so I'm going to go down and I'm going to press the enter key to set up a new mix or a new uh, entry on that line. When I do that, I can give that mix a name. That just helps you keep things straight as to what everything is. This is going to be the arming mix or arm mix. Again, this is much easier to do in the companion app, but I am enough experience doing it the hard way that I don't mind. And this is going to be a very simple mix. It's just going to take the switch as an input and that's it. So I'm going to go down to source. I'm going to hit enter to modify it. And I'm going to flip the switch one time and the Tyrannus will fill that switch in as the source of the mix. So it's a very easy way to set a switch up to map to an aux channel. Just edit the source and flip the switch one time and it auto fills it. And that's really all I have to do. I'm not doing anything more complicated than that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for my buzzer. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna name the mix and then I'm gonna go to source. I'm gonna press enter one time. Source will flash indicating it's being modified and I'm just gonna flip, flick the buzzer switch one time and then that switch will be outputting on that aux channel. Obviously, there are way more complicated things you can do, but this is the most basic way of causing a switch to map to an aux channel. And now you can see that as I move the switch, aux 3 is moving as I move the three position switch. Another thing you may notice is that the endpoint for aux 3 is 987, not 1000. I haven't adjusted the endpoints of the aux channels. I've only adjusted the endpoints of roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle. And that's, you don't really need to adjust the endpoints of the aux channels as long as they're, you know, in the right ballpark. The reason for that is that with the main control channels, the the value co correlates to the how fast the copter is moving. So if the channel doesn't go all the way to 1,000, you won't reach your full targeted speed. And if it goes over, you'll have some dead band at the end of the stick movement. For the aux channels, though, it's just, you know, what range is it in to buzz the buzzer or arm the copter. And as long as the endpoint is, you know, in the ballpark of 1,000, as long as it doesn't cause any errors, then you're fine. So you don't need to adjust the endpoints of the aux channels to be 1,000 to 2,000. Let's take a look here at my modes. I've got, again, a whole video on how to set up modes, but I'm just verifying that the arm and the beeper modes turn yellow when the little indicator goes into the range in question. Uh, do this with your props off <laughs> uh, because you don't want to spin the motors with the props on, obviously. Just verifying that my modes are set up and working correctly. If your arm mode doesn't work, then, uh, then you need to watch my video on quadcopter won't arm to figure out how. Now let's go to the motors tab and I'm going to just verify that when I spin up uh, the throttle that the motors all try to spin up, the copter is armed and everything is going correctly. Here now I'm in the telemetry screen and I'm going to set up my telemetry. Uh, I need to do discover new sensors 
with the copter powered up. And in some cases, you won't discover sensors until the copter is armed, okay? So if you discover sensors and you don't find sensors like VFAS and RSSI, the exact sensors you discover will depend on the flight controller, but some of these sensors should be present for every beta flight or clean flight controller. If you do discover sensors and nothing appears, you may need to have the copter armed, but in most cases, when you do discover sensors, you should, you should discover all the sensors that you're seeing here, uh, and that means that you're ready to do telemetry things with your flight controller. Obviously, if you have an enabled telemetry, that's another reason you might not see sensors. If you haven't configured telemetry correctly, then you're not going to uh, see sensors either. Having discovered the sensors, I'm going to go to the telemetry screen, and I need to change the voltage source, uh, and I'll show you why I do that in a second. But I'm going to go down. I'm just verifying the output of all the sensors seems correct and seeing what sensors I've got. The sensor I'm most concerned with, though, is VFAS, V-F-A-S. VFAS is where, if you're doing VBAT monitoring in beta flight or clean flight, you, that's where it's going to report your actual battery voltage. So here I've plugged in a flight pack, and you can see VFAS has jumped to 16.5 volts, and that's verified that I'm reading and reporting VFAS correctly. But what I want to do is I want to make v VFAS be the source for the voltage that's displayed on the main screen. And in order to do that, I'm going to scroll down to this option. Voltage source. And I'm going to set that to VFAS. And what that's going to do is when I go back to the main screen right there where I'm pointing, it's going to show that value. And that means that's where I can just quickly glance down without going to the telemetry screen to see my battery voltage. I bet there's a bunch of you out there who didn't know that and uh, just learned something really useful. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Those are the steps I, not just the, like the hypothetically the steps I go through, that's actually what I did when I set up this new Tyrannus after first getting it out of the box. I wanted to record it so you could get the real legit experience. Um, this one is now ready to go. I just have to bind the models, uh, bind the copters to this model in the Tyrannus. Uh, I got another video explaining how to get all your copters bound on the same model. Uh, so that you don't have to switch models every time you start up a new uh, copter, every time you switch copters. I'll put a link to that video in the upper right as well. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was educational. Some of you, I hope that some of you, even those of you who know a little bit about the Tyrannus, might have learned a trick or two. And as always, happy flying.